We're not <laughs> hey everybody, we're about to get started. Scott, you can use the mic. It's on. <laughs> Is this on? Yes. Wonderful. We're about to get started here. Actually, we'll just start right now and everyone can kind of work over as we do it. Welcome to Springboard, Bowtie's inaugural event. We are so pleased to see everyone here. And, and you know, I, I want to take some time before we get started. I get the fun job tonight. I just get to thank people that were awesome throughout this entire process. Um, and, and that certainly starts with the teams. We, we have a platform that enables these teams to play with their application, launch their application, get it out in the world. And all indications are they stood up and stood up strong. We're going to see some really cool technologies all day today. But before we get into it, before we start all the presentations, I, I have my little piece of paper here so I make sure I do justice to everyone. And I wanted to just do a couple of thank yous. Like I said, I got the, the best job. First and foremost, I'd like to thank and recognize our judges sitting back here, and I'll, I'll say a couple of nice things about each because there's many, many nice things to say about each. Um, first and foremost, G sitting there on, on the far side. See, thanks for being here. CEO of Desire, she is an utterly amazing digital and creative personality that has launched products and have been a force within the industry. Next to her, Jared Tarbell. Jared Tarbell. <laughs> Uh, Jared is also one of those interesting people that has such a creative spin on all the digital work that he had done. And, and you know, we, we all know him very much from local endeavors like Levitated Toy Factory, which has been a huge success thus far, but also is one of the originals from Etsy as well. So we, we have some great bench strength already. And to round that out, Alan Weber. And uh, very much like the rest of our panel, we're all very accomplished. I can say lots of great things about Alan, but uh, I'll start with, you know, editor of Harvard Business Review, and certainly we've all heard of Fast Company, which this man is uh, to be given credit for. So we're, we're very excited to have everyone here. I also want to take a second and thank a lot of our sponsors, because we have a lot of them here. First and foremost, Bat Pipe, the facility we're sitting in here, they were wonderful. <laughs> They have been very welcoming, they gave us great space, they gave us great prizes, they, they've been a tremendous partner in what we're doing. New Mexico Tech Council, I see a couple of members running around here as well, also been very supportive. Digital Ocean, um, you probably saw some of the swag that we had out there. Digital Ocean as a major provider of hosting <coughs> services and servers has stepped up and given us lots of great things for all of you, many of which were used by the contestants. Um, yes. We have a representative of that running around here too in the form of Dave as well. Uh, Learner Venture Law, whose actually office is directly behind us, believe it or not. Um, they also stepped up and created a great prize package. Wonka Square, Zendo, Santa Fe Brewing Company, Delicious Sip Tea, who I think actually I saw a lot of people running around teacups and whatnot, who also had stood up and been a tremendous supporter of what we're doing. Johnny Boards is also in the, the audience. I don't know where Roomba has been, but all of these were tremendous sponsors as we went forward. I'd like to single out two groups, though. First is Creative Startups with uh, Roxanne. Not only is this a strong part sponsor for our event, but she also was a soldier trying to put this together. It was a tremendous work effort. She's to be given credit. And last, and certainly not least, and it was last for a reason, Crystal Ciarza, her, her firm, her interns, they were both sponsoring this event. What's that? And employees, yes, sorry. Uh, I, I apologize, I totally downgraded it. Yeah, you all just got promotions, sorry. Uh, but they, they, they also fit the, the bucket of being tremendous sponsors for what we've done, but they were also the soldiers. They made sure that everything clicked, everything went forward, and frankly, we're all sitting here and it looks as good as it is because of their great support. So with that being said, I'd like to just kick off. Yes. We're going to move directly into the presentations at this point. We're going to have Chad come up and talk a little bit about presentations themselves and what you have uh, and what's expected. I don't suppose uh, Gary Opendahl is in the audience just yet. I think he's going to be joining us a little bit later and he wanted to say a few words as well. But I'm going to turn it over to Chad right now so we can talk a little bit about the presentations themselves and get us kicked off. Hi, everybody. I just want to reiterate, thank you again all so much for being here. We, uh, 
So springboard is something that literally happened in our minds about three weeks ago. And today we're going to watch people ship software on our platform publicly in front of 100 participants and audience members. That blows me away. Like, I'm so thankful for all of you. So thank, uh, thank you for that. We have a really interesting and fast format. Um, it's because we had so many participants. This was the largest developer hackathon in the state to date. Uh, we have 11 presentations back to back. We're going to limit them to five minutes per. And so the contestants are going to come up here. They're going to show you what they built, talk about their idea. But we're not going to have Q&A. Uh, it is going to be round robin. We're pulling names from the, the magic sword in hand. <laughs> and, uh, and then after that, uh, we'll have some time at the end when the judges, uh, after they've convened and they award the prizes, have Q&A with the winning teams. After that, uh, we do have everybody on a mailing list. Um, unless you've opted out, we will send everyone's project links so you can check things out. I know a number of people are here to solicit feedback on our projects and participation. So you'll get to see everything firsthand you know, on your own computer and mobile device uh, later on. So, <coughs> The first team, oh, and we do have one team participating from Skype. This is so great. So up first, the, the hardest rocking team in the, uh, the entire participation for whom the code tolls <laughs> with my registry app. Hello. Um, we are for Who the Cold Tolls. This is Chris, our iOS designer. Um, I'm Patrick, and our dearly departed um, designer Kevin is toiling away at Photoshop as we speak. Yet another engagement. Um, so we have my registry app, which is the only wedding registry or gift registry app you'll never, never need. Um, this came about when Kevin recently um, got married, and uh, they found that you need to create a registry of Bed Bath and Beyond, um, because the free one at Best Buy was a big disappointment for Kevin. Um, he really wanted that big screen TV. There was a rich uncle in the mix somewhere. He thought that was a sure thing. Um, so the idea with our app um, and website is that you can have a universal gift registry. And not only that, you can add items to it from your phone using the barcode scanner. Um, so we've done some mock-ups. We've got a little proof of concept here. So if you want to sure. Start talking. Okay, I'll go ahead and uh, actually, if we want to, uh, you can show some screens first if you want. Yeah, go ahead and do that. I'll um, pull up that. So it's, uh, we think the design, again, I have to mention Kevin Lamont, he's not here, and I feel bad about that. Um, the design looks great because of him, and you do a login like this, and then you start. We would add in support for things like uh, baby showers and such. So you're getting married, you can add a nice um, picture there. There's, oh, sorry. There, there's uh, Kevin and his husband Joshua. <clears throat> Enter your name. And there's some details on your reception. And then you start selling <coughs> products. And here, Chris can go ahead and show us. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, oh, that'll work. Um, so uh, we're going to just load the app right here, and what we have is this is actually uh, working right now on the phone. I can log in and go ahead and start scanning. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Is, oh, thank you. Got the Chromecast, always a lovely gift idea if anyone's on the market. So I'm going to scan it just like this, as if uh, 
you you would do this at the start. I could actually do it like this without shaping. There we go. Uh, what happened in the background is we connected to the server backend. We got the price and the image from Amazon. Uh, then I can go ahead and add this to to our registry and. There's the items that we scan so far. And as you can tell, it looks like oatmeal. So, <laughs> I skipped the top item, I skipped that found in the trash. Right. Obviously, uh, the Yonkman household does he eat oatmeal. Um, don't even know about barcodes around now. Um, but there, you know, you can add items. Um, and then the next step comes when you actually want people to buy this for you, because that's really what it's all about at the wedding. Um, so, at that point, these items would show up on a website. We've got a nice mock up here. If you think it's catchy. Um, and you'd have a URL that you would send to all your participants of your wedding. And we'd have this nice page with all this. And there's a nice comparison shopping piece where you can get prices from um, all sorts of different places. And uh, Kevin and Joshua really like cleaning. Um, <laughs> and Dyson. Yeah, it's a wonderful back. Take care of that cat there. Um, so that's kind of our piece. Do you have anything to add, Chris? Uh, no, the, the, just the possibilities for this app um, are quite compelling because not only is it convenient to build your registry as you're going around you know, using the, the web the browser or, or your, your device, um, when people get the list and they want to buy you know, gifts, uh, we're, we're actually putting, pulling up prices for them. So uh, we, will, we will let them know who has the best price, whether it be Amazon or Target or Walmart or whatever. So we can actually make the server call and that gets sent back to the device. So and my little idea was, hey, we saved you that $25. There's a set edition, you know, pull some of that. Um, anyway, that's our app. Um, I want to thank our esteemed judges here. And of course, the bow ties themselves. This is a whole bunch of fun. And this happened with bow tie. And hopefully check out that link which will go to our Bow tie page, sign up for our email. We have a nice countdown then. Because of course we're gonna win. We want to launch by <laughs> South by Southwestern, and that's us. Thank you. Yeah, looks great, guys. Nice work. Next up, we're going to be doing Mood to Watch by the newscasting folks. Newscastic team, um, but we're really excited to show you a kind of passion side project of ours today, um, and you know, thank Bowtie for giving us a chance to motivate us to put this together. Um, let me just ask you: It turns out that three out of four of us are actually cord cutters. Who in the crowd here is no longer cable or satellite and pure cord cutting? A lot of people, and I'm sure that if you're a cord cutter. You've spent many times just staring at the grid, going, what do I want to watch? I did some you know, quick research and figured out that I actually have access, me personally, to 40,000 options at any one time. And that's just Netflix, Amazon, and Hulu. If you factor in all the other viewing options for the cord cutters out there, you're literally looking at hundreds of thousands of options at any moment in time. So what tools does this beautiful industry give us to sort through all this? Technology literally from the 90s. Collaborative filtering tells us if you like this, you might like these things. So how brilliant is it that if I like Pulp Fiction, I might like other Tarantino movies? Really? 
Um, or this one's even better. If you like Terminator, you might like two and three. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. That helps a lot. I don't know about you, but when I go home tonight, you know, and I'm going to sit on my couch and try to figure out what I'm going to watch, I'm, I'm probably in a very unique mood. I'm feeling a certain way. I'm with a different group of people. Um, uh, you know, if I'm by myself, I feel one way. If I'm with my daughter, I feel another way. The, 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 the missing piece in all this is what's so key. Is that what we're watching in the first place is the emotion that it creates, the feelings that it creates, the, the mood that it creates. So we did a little impromptu research. I have to get the name of this one just to get it right. Um, Robert Klutchek's Psychoevolutionary Theory of Emotion. And this is what we actually based a recommendation engine on, is the feelings and moods that things create. And we're calling it Mood to Watch, and we're, I'm excited to show it to you. I should point out that obviously this is a two-week exercise, so we have a limited number of records and we crowdsourced as much data as we could in about a five-day period. So anybody that's interested in kind of becoming part of this project can actually register here through Bowtie and we'll immediately add you to kind of our, our crowdsourced crew that really helps us collect more accurate data. Um, but to give you a quick sense of how this works, I can literally come in here and now pick any mood that I'm in. <laughs> so, so I can go across this entire you know mood band or mood ring and say, you know, I'm really I don't like horror movies, but today's Friday the 13th, so I'll go in more of the fear mode. And now it pulls in records that meet that mood criteria. If I want to overlay that with a little bit of, let's see, ah, now I can see the movies that combine those two mood criteria. And helps you kind of make some decisions about, you know, what's the best thing for me to watch tonight. The other kind of fun thing is that if I really want to get into it, I can actually dissect this into situations. So I can say, I just had a shitty day at work, <laughs> <laughs> and I want to feel better about the world. And now <laughs> that will actually be good. So you can imagine all the ways that this can go. It's it's an overlay that literally, like, how how are we so caught in the kind of archaic, one-dimensional world that we've been presented with? We'd love to have a chance of kind of overlaying some emotion and some other kind of things that we watch. Thanks. <laughs> nervous and wants to be next. Well, let's do data match with data match. That seems like next. I'm matching them with the team right now. Um, 
The question is, how can you use this model and apply it to practical everyday use in a different scenario? Um, about a week or two ago, we were having a round conversation at, at, at the office about um, prospective parents wanting to look for egg donors and uh, people who would want to match up in that way. And when we made a joke, well, this is a Tinder app like that. Parents looking for, prospective parents looking for uh, donors with information about um, education, nationality, all that good stuff that they that they look for. So I figured, well, why not build something like that for uh, for Springboard? So I came up with Data Match. Um, it's an API that will make it easy to integrate um, that functionality to different applications. Um, and I used Bowtie. <coughs> Create a couple of sample implementations of that API. So nothing pretty. So we have two examples: a donor match and a job match line. These are both using the same API for different projects. So here is the example. Then I have to find real pictures. Uh, a donor match. So if you look, simple details, name, uh, details specific to this particular project, um, should be education, weight, height, any, anything else. Um, interested, yeah. Yeah. Really simple, um, very simple. Your functionality. If you look at our matches, uh, this guy also wanted to pair up with us. So, we have another example that uses the exact same endpoints, exact same API. It's just configured to a different project on uh, back end. Um, so, job match, something similar, uh, somebody looking for a job. Uh, name, age, experience. Uh, so that's pretty much a very simple implementation of the idea. Um, so under the hood, it's a, a simple real application um, used for a backend API. It's only three or four restful endpoints. That's your already have listing. Um, both that handles all the user signups and authentication, so I don't have to worry about any of that. Okay. The parents get system completely. Um, it's a very, very minimal, um, it's very much so an MVP. There's a lot of work that's to be done, this proof of concept. Um, in the future, we implemented as a service where we host different types of projects that would allow for a company to say, well, I want to match up with these specific individuals, um, build a project, we'll host it for you, or it could be um, utilized as an API, integrated with whatever the area you have going on. Um, for bigger integrations or some things that don't need to be implemented, um, that I term uh, mass really quick. Um, so if you're an organization, you don't want to have to go in and match with everybody. Um, we allow them to go in and match with everybody, to automatically match with everybody, so they don't have to pair up one by one on one by one basis. And of course, filters, basic, basic stuff. Um, other use cases: job match, startup investor match, volunteer. Uh, cause match, e-commerce product integration, you want to find a lawyer, find a babysitter, apartment tenant match, even more data. Mm -hmm. That's me. <laughs> Thank you, Alexander, with data match. Um, well, nice work. I feel like there should be more drama with the drawing. And so far, it's like hand goes in, card comes out, name comes out. Drum. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. On fire, right? Uh, <laughs> let's do Need to Watch with Arlo. Then have the rest. Thank you. 
All right, uh, so we're uh, Team Arlo. Uh, we've got uh, Bill McDonald and uh, James Mustowski, and I'm uh, Alonzo in the chair. And uh, so, concept behind this basically uh, so here's something that happens to me often uh, a friend will recommend a film or TV show, or I might read like a positive review of a movie or TV show online. So, then what? Uh, Generally, I just forget about it um, and do nothing about it. Maybe if it occurs to me, uh, I might add it to my Netflix queue. Uh, but the selection on Netflix is, is kind of limited, especially streaming. And, and I, I kind of like really weird movies uh, that are oftentimes not on Netflix. Uh, so I want the ability to uh, store a list of the movies and TV shows uh, that I want to watch uh, with links not just to Netflix, but to a variety of streaming and purchase options. So uh, we used uh, Bowtie to uh, help us build Need to Watch It. So James is going to do a little demo. OK, so one of the great things about our site is it lets you add across multiple platforms uh, any video that you want to watch, both across TV shows as well as movie sources. Um, so we're going to uh, run a search here. And you know, you usually have something in mind that you want to search for. It could be something completely off the wall, like cross-dressing comedy. So let's search for some right here. <laughs> One of the all-time greats, Mrs. Doubtfire. All right, there it's firing through. So we have our list of uh, search results. Mrs. Doubtfire is a uh, is a pretty unique search, so we only have one search result. But all we have to do here is just click Add into the queue. We get a successful message. And let's keep going. Let's add a few other things here. So let's also search for probably a movie I haven't seen since it was on Betamax, Tootsie. There we go. We also have not only the, uh, the movie that I was intending to search for, but a list of uh, similar searches. So we're going to add Tootsie to our queue. And uh, because uh, it also does search not only movie platforms, but also available television shows, uh, we're going to search for the all-time 80s classic, Bosom Buddies. Because who doesn't like Tom Hanks? And there's the results. We're going to add that to our queue as well. And then we can uh, view our queue to see what we have loaded for it. And uh, so we know that we have two on food. Thanks for everything, Julia and Mark. That is the official full title of that movie. Um, Some Like It Hot, the all-time classic with Marilyn Monroe. But one thing that we can also do is uh, reorganize our queue to put things higher or lower. And uh, so that is also reorganizing your queue to make sure you are on top of what's important. Uh, one of the other things that we have to do is, as um, Alonzo was saying, was that we can uh, keep track of what available services are there to view these videos, not just search them, add them to a random queue. So we we'll search for Medea. And we'll click on the stream in which will give us the available uh, streaming services, as well as for digital purchase and uh, disc purchases as well. So we have streaming options, actually nothing available for streaming but rental, and there you go. We can go over to the site. All right. So that was a, just a really uh, quick little uh, three-hour tour. Uh, if, you don't get, if you don't get my joke about three-hour tour, you use, uh, need to watch the search for Gilligan's Island of our, uh, <laughs> of our, uh, of our app. And, um, and we have a lot of stretch goals, integration with social media, group queues to where people can create their own queues and share them and collaboratively uh, build them, and better uh, better integration to things like Amazon, YouTube, and stuff like that. And uh, definitely uh, remember, if you're in the mood to watch it, you need to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank <laughs> you.
loose and connects. And who has a lighter so at one point this can be on fire, it's going to go better. I have a math degree, I really do, like an advanced math degree, and I literally am struggling to actually identify the polyhedron that is identified in this team name. So it's quasi homebrew dodecahedron with sass chatter. <laughs> this is counting against your time. It's up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> So we are Team Quasi Rami Cozy Dotakahedron. I dare you to say that three times fast. <laughs> this is a shipathon. Uh, our team is actually shipping something. We invite you to try our product right now at sasschatter.bowtie.io. So SAS Chatter, uh, no E in the SAS Chatter. Um, so what we are is a virtual peanut gallery. We want you to be able to talk to your friends in real time, but it's a little different than what you might be used to. The way I want to introduce this is that on the internet, nobody knows that you're a dog. You <laughs> might even be a horse. <laughs> what makes SAS Chatter different? We don't care. You can be whatever you want to be. You can be the witty smart app that you always want to be. We are a chat platform that we have four different ways that makes us different. First, we're pseudo anonymous. You don't get to pick your name. We generate a funny name for you. <laughs> yeah. I invite you again to try our, our, our old um, ship thing and see what the funny name that you get. Um, I, I won't mention the funniest one I've seen. We're pretty correct. We keep no logs. So when you use something like um, or Slack or Hangouts or whatever, Google and Facebook are keeping all of your messages. We are not. We don't store messages at all. What happens is that on SAS Chatter, your messages only get sent to everyone that's connected. And after that, they disappear into the ether. No one sees them. We have a concept of chat rooms. So you don't have to talk to everyone in the world. You can pick a topic that you want to talk about and start talking right now. We have no login. That means you don't have to put in your phone or your email address. So when we say you're still on, you actually are. We don't know who you are. Neither does anyone else. So I invite you to get sassy right now. If you go on our prototype, go to one of our channels. For example, the Bowtie channel. This is Sass Chatter. It looks sort of like an SMS app, but it lets you send love into the world. <laughs> I'm going to send a message that I want to send to the world. And hopefully there are other people out in the world. Yes. So you all know I am old stony cat, but apparently the pig is out here somewhere in our audience. <laughs> <laughs> apparently there's some sassy people out in the audience. <laughs> So, use case for this. <laughs> Say that you are at a conference, or a meeting, or at a bar. You'll maybe talk to your friends right there about something funny, or maybe you can't talk about them. You'll wait till the end of the day and start ranting about whatever silly thing happened at your meeting. On SAS Chatter, you can do it right now and complain, just like these people are doing. Um, you can't use Twitter or Facebook because they, they log who you are. On SAS Chatter, 
you're, you're nobody. You're the pig or something about dogs, kitten tainted. Who knows? <laughs> Sass Chatter, we let you be sassy. We have a lot of competitors. There's Snapchat, Whisper, Secret. They all make you log in and don't really know where they're keeping everything. We're not keeping anything. Um, we're at zero friction compared to those services. We don't let you, we don't make you log in. And the way we plan to make money is a new product called SAS Shatter Pro. With SAS Shatter Pro, you can pay us and let you keep the funny username that we randomly generate for you. We'll have a meme generator so that you can send funny meme photos to all the people in the channel. We want to go to South by Southwest to launch our product because we want to complain using a SAS chat about all the silly awesome hipsters. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, I want to say that uh, in a bit of SAS, that SAS chat is built in New Mexico, where apparently we're the worst place to be a child. And Government has been known to rape people. SAS Shadow will be the next best thing. I do just want to note that there's no sassing about the MC during the next segment. SAS Shadow or otherwise. Very random, very random next team. I wish I got the first one I could. It's going to be 11 online with Trek, Food Truck, ABQ. <laughs> so uh, we built Trek, Food Truck. I'm not starting it. You can't use the start. I'm starting it if you say another word. <laughs> All right, I better wait. So we had a client. Um, it's ABQ Live Magazine. We recently redid their website. And they do all this nightclub, nightlife stuff in Albuquerque. And they said, hey, we really want a way to uh, show people where food trucks are. And uh, Springboard was coming up. And we said, well, let's try it. So we built this very simple uh, app that shows you uh, where things are. We have to refresh the page. Hold on a second. So when you, without being logged in, you just can, the app will show you your location and which food trucks are in the area. So we have some fake food trucks. Putin on the Ritz is my fake Russian food truck. <laughs> and uh, we have Gracias Garcitas, which is Josh's fake food truck. His family does make fabulous food. By the way, they do. <laughs> and uh, Cheesy Street, which is a food truck that is currently outside if anyone wants uh, soup or a grilled cheese sandwich. They're our first user for uh, food truck, uh, track food trucks, uh, ABQ. And I'd like to say that this, our project, uh, we wanted something that we could do really fast. We wrote the API in about an hour. Um, but that's only possible because Bowtie did all the user registration and all that stuff that you do for every application that's a big hassle. Um, so we were able to do this in two afternoons, partially because we had some issues <laughs> with our server being proxied. But um, now I think that's worked out and we could make something like this in an afternoon and get it out there, see if it works. And uh, if it doesn't, just move on to the next thing. So thank you, Bowtie guys, for making that possible. We didn't show you what it was to like, log in. We still have three minutes, so we're going to take you on the grand tour because that's all it's going to take. <laughs> All right, something happened. Uh-oh. 
from the geolocation. You can uh, edit your profile here. So if I wanted to change the name, click on the Ritz. S for some reason, uh, or some tasty food by Eric and his Russian wife Lisa. Let's <laughs> put that in there, update it, profile is updated, and then you check out, since we're already checked in, it's easy, and the map is not initializing, that's okay then. And then to check back in, just press check in. Thank you. I don't know what's happening with the geolocation. It was working earlier, but we probably yeah. yeah, those things on. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, this is Track Food Track ABQ. Um, we're going to see with ABQ Live uh, what this can become. And because we put in so little time, it's really no loss if it doesn't work out. My name is Travis. I'm here with the Grow Connect team. Juan and Dustin are joining me to the left and <clears throat> to your right. And uh, our, our platform sought, out, sought to correct a major, take advantage of a big opportunity and correct a major gap, a major shortfall in the, within that opportunity. And I'm talking about the medical marijuana industry that has been exploded recently in the US. So Grow Connect looked at all the different available opportunities for technology within that industry. And we did some validation over the past two weeks. We looked at what's currently available, what do the different major players within this industry really want? What do they need to operate uh, efficiently and become more professional as they expand and grow in this new, newly legalized and regulated industry? So we started looking at all the different available solutions there were for consumers and retailers, but people weren't addressing really the foundational part of this industry, which are the farmers, the growers. They weren't providing adequate solutions for for that part of the manufacturing and, and production process. Grow Connect is about connecting licensed growers of medical marijuana. Right now, there's a huge shortfall in New Mexico between what's being demanded and what's being supplied, and that's about 80% according to last year's stats. In Colorado, there were 53 tons 
of under or unserved demand that eventually led people to go to the black market. So to avoid that and to save some of the precious tax revenues that we all know are possible with this new industry, we connected growers through a seamless, reliable directory and made sure that everyone on this directory were licensed members of the growing establishment. So I'm going to let Juan run through the actual product. So in addition to what Travis is saying, one of the big, the real major issues here is that when that demand or that shortfall is not, you know, filled in by regulated and licensed avenues, people seek alternative avenues. So when he said 80%, that's an 80% shortfall demand to requirement here in New Mexico and 40% in New Mexico in Colorado. So in Colorado in year one, you're talking about $700 million in sales where they have a 40% deficit in meeting those obligations. So, I mean, you can look at the tax implications uh, as long as the, along with the regulatory um, implications because if it's regulated, it's licensed, it's tested, um, you know where it's coming from and who it's coming from. So. You guys push your cable all the way in? The colors are looking weird. I'm going to give a 30 second flux break here. Send your picture, nice designer, like making your skin. There we go. Now we're in. Now we're in. The real colors, real green. <laughs> and as you notice on here too, it's not just about the raw resource. This is also different products. We, we discovered through validation that concentrates, edibles, all, all of these are the the demand uh, gaps are, are are much bigger between demand and supply. So it's not just about raw plant, but this is also the different uh, variations. And it's also not just about buying and selling, but trading as well. A lot of growers might have more of one strain and those growers might own a dispensary. They want to trade some of their excess strain for strain that they don't have. So there you can also see this as a regulation for different strains when there's gaps between strains as well. Manufacturers might go to our directory to find strains for their production process, and they won't be limited by a lack of raw resources as well. So what we have here is basically it's a search index and what it allows you to do is all the growers can post excess inventory um, at the point where they're licensed and validated by the site uh, they can go ahead and log in they can search by type be it plant edible concentrate um, by quantity um, by the rating of the individual grower and so what we can do is we can go ahead and search for things like raw plants it'll pull up all the plants that have been posted to inventory Gong. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Just gonna note, those are the first ones to win the Gong Award, <laughs> which is pretty prestigious in this particular uh, contest. So keep that in mind. Ooh, who's next? Blackfish with the Blackfish Web Creator. Come to the stage. <laughs> with your super cryptic awesome. Oh, they are here. And look how cryptic they are. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Hi, I'm Tom Anderson. This is Bill Anderson. We're probably the only team that aren't web developers. We actually hate web development. Um, actually, a couple, couple weeks ago, we weren't web developers anyways. Um, so to start, do you know the worst design decision in the history of computing? So in, in the late 80s, there was a guy that was designing HTML. And he said, you know what would be awesome? Let's give power to the people. Let's let the browser decide what the web page is going to look like. So here we are, 25 years later, the entire internet has been built on that concept, and like I said, web development is just ridiculous. My hat's off to all the web developers that have been figuring out how to make web pages work. Um, yeah, they thought, they thought this works for text, but when you want to do the thing, yeah, it makes sense. The end, there's a... um, so what we've done is in the past couple weeks solved that uh, you know trillion dollar mistake, and so <laughs> and, and learned how to become web developers. So we created the, the Blackfish website. So I'm going to go through this kind of quick, and I have a ton of time. Um, and so, to kind of show the first concept, what we did is we recreated the um, bow tie uh, front page. And so you could go through and see it looks like what what they uh, you know created. So the way the web should be, you should be able to move things around, click and drag, put things the way you want. So for example, if you want to have this image like this, we put it over here. I'm going to grab the fish. I'm going to put him up this way. I'm going to grab this guy, turn him. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to put it a little bit over, you know, like that. That's how it should be to build web pages. If you're a really technically savvy person, you can build a web page. If you're not, you know, you can't. And here we are in 2015, you know, and it, it's just difficult to build web pages. Like, ridiculous. You know, it shouldn't, shouldn't be that way. So here's another example. Um, here's the, the store example. So what you can do, for example, is create, you push this button, and it brings up a store template. So you can, for example, you can, for example, uh, come in and say, I want to create a, a store object. I'm going to come in and grab uh, you know, a laptop. We have a library of tens of thousands of images. I'm going to turn it just a little bit. I'm going to be just a little smaller. This is um, you know, the black, black dish laptop. I'm going to I should have made this text red. I want to make it red. It's uh, $14.99. Um, put in our awesome laptop. So really, literally within minutes, you can get a website up and running. You can have a store running. A lot of this is because of the power of bow tie. Honestly, like we couldn't have done this without having the really powerful bow tie back in. They did an awesome job and helped us get things up and running. Um, you know, you create a store up and you can have it you know, auto-populated with the, the summary of the store, check out all that kind of stuff. Um, another example here is the Springboard Demo Day. When, when we started, we were four hours into the project. We finally got to get working. We were everybody else was uh, five minutes into the project. Um, learned literally from scratch, JavaScript, HTML, HTML5, Canvas, Git, Bowtie, Create, JS, JSON, Chrome development tools. So we started from scratch um, and did a lot. Again, speaks to the power of Bowtie. I'm going to bring up. Uh, yeah, did the did the entire UI interface for this app yeah. in the week. <laughs> okay, so here I'm going to bring this up. Bring it here. All right. Uh, not quite that much. We we actually finished this guy working live for the first time last night at 6:28. I checked the time because I texted Bill. It's working. Less than less than 24 hours. Um, all right. So now what you do is Lay things out, do things the way you naturally would do things normally, you know, any other type of design. Um, and then one push button, you hit it, publish. You want to uh, publish your app. <coughs> All right. All right, there you go. And now it's published. Now if you go to the so it takes, it takes a second for it to refresh online, but when you go well, to the web page, oh, yeah. All right. Cool. So now we've made that web page. Uh, refresh it. We're going to go into the. Um, it's probably loading that file actually. But here we're going to go into. Um, all right. We're going to the uh, where we created the front page. Here we've got the images down here. Uh, so it's the right way. Measure changes. Come into um, the store. Here we've got our nice uh, store. And then down here, uh, that image is loaded. So this is just yeah, it takes a minute to refresh, but once it gets uploaded, then it's, then it's 
post the yeah. document. So we made the easiest way to create web pages. Just do it the way that, that you want to do it. Anyone want to talk about it? On the Good for the last drop, I think, on time there. <laughs> Somebody timed their presentation. <laughs> So now that we have that, we have one person who's been gone, one team that, or one team has been gone, one team has been exactly five minutes. So, to you team, are you around yet? Since you were <clears throat> randomly drawn in that I drawn in that I put you on top last time, so you're randomly being called now. How random! <laughs> Uh, okay, hi, we are the 2U team. Um, I am Zach, and this is Damien. I'm going to multitask. Okay, so uh, we are the 2U team. We are, um, first I just wanted to say thank you to the Otai team. They, they were really awesome this week, helping us try to throw this together. Uh, we, we didn't have a lot of time to do it, and Scott sort of convinced me to do it. I was trying to avoid them all week, and then there's like, <laughs> <laughs> so we're honored to be here. Have uh, the chance to fail fast. We hope we don't fail too fast after we give this presentation. And, um, and uh, with that, I want to bring you to you. Yeah, to you. Um, and uh, let us first just go through. Sorry, I just wanted to take you guys through the splash page real quick. This is basically what we built with um, on the Bowtie Editor, but uh, the, the idea behind our app is that we want to build a marketplace for democratized delivery. We want to connect people with a little bit of time and uh, to people with a little bit of money who can pay for that time and, and have you deliver something. So, so far our functionality isn't quite as fleshed out, like I said earlier, but um, we'd like you to sign up with your email and we once we are ready to launch, we can um, we'll you know, uh, hit you up. The, uh, the basic functionality we have laid out here, so if you guys want to read that in detail to review uh, later what we're going through, feel free. Um, I'm Zach, this is Damien. Let's go with that, that button at the top. And so from the Bowtie uh, front page, we're going to sign in. And hopefully it won't break. Okay, so basically the way it works is that you can either be a runner or a consumer. And uh, the first page you would come to, this would be your consumer page. You can click the button at the top left to go to your runner page. Or click the consumer page to go back to your consumer page. So we're gonna start there and take you through the process. Um, you first get to see the number of runners in your in range. A runner would be somebody who potentially will bring you um, the good you're asking for. You can uh, specify as much as you want, want to, be as specific as you want, uh, and then put a number on it. So I just want 20 tacos, I don't care from where, uh, I'll pay $40 for it, and I'll pay $5 for somebody to, to come bring it to me. Uh, post your bid, and then eventually a runner will select that bid, if you make a good enough bid, and you're connected. Uh, you'll see a picture of the runner, you'll see his progress, this would ideally be a map, and uh, when you get close to each other, you can flash phones. Say you're in a crowded place, your phone would flash. And uh, the, as a consumer, you'd of course have to approve the delivery and uh, rate the run. The rating is going to be important for security reasons. Functionality you won't see here uh, yet, um, but coming soon, is to have, uh, you know, there's a time limit on the bid. There's a time limit on the bid, like there's a time limit on me right now. And um, it, uh, if up to five people respond to your bid in that five minutes, you get to pick from those five. And there's a review system. If a runner wants to uh, upgrade their, 
their status, they can apply to be a verified runner, get background checks, et cetera, and that will show. So if we can go back to the runner page real quick. Sorry, five one more. Once you're on the runner page, you can say certain settings like how far you would travel, et cetera. Hit on duty. That would post in the, in the consumer's page as who's in range. And then you'd see bids that are available. For some reason, there's 10 people bidding the same thing in the same place. But we'll just deal with that later. So you select a bid, hit select. And I don't know how much time I have left, a minute. So um, essentially, it's the same deal just from the other view. You see directions to your customer, details from the bid. Um, who your customer is, or some sort of identifier, and you can tell them when you're getting closer when you're there. Again, you can flash phones if you're in a crowded place. Um, so that's pretty much the quick, quick and dirty run through. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, eventually, we want to integrate this with social media, perhaps something like Nextdoor, which is a uh, social media app for uh, neighborhoods. So that will allow you to connect to your friends and uh, neighbors. And you can only send your bids to the people you want to send it to. And well, come to your response, and you can say, hey, it'll work. But it's 11 o'clock at night, you might only want to have to So that's us, too. Thanks for listening, and thanks for having us. Thank you, guys. Um, can I use that to order another Manhattan in the back? <laughs> yeah, really? Okay, cool. Sounds awesome. What's your bid? <laughs> N dollars. A positive real number. Less than five dollars. Yeah, so I give you the range, right? Now you can kind of interpolate. Uh, that's your. That's going to get to real for now. <clears throat> Good question, though, because obviously you're paying attention. Uh, <laughs> next up, let's hear from Shredded Metal Productions with Open Chair Stylus Star. Just a quick note, we'll note that he's not using his computer. He's using one of our founder's computers, and that's how awesome the website can be. Anywhere, anytime. Also, it's the world's smallest computer, which isn't helping people who are human size. <laughs> All right. Well, that's about all I got right there. Open chair. That's it. I'm done. Just kidding. Actually, look, there's a lot of beautiful people here, but he's got their hair done. It looks like everybody combed their hair except for that guy. Right in the middle. Right there. I, I, I suggest you go get a haircut. That's all I gotta say. The other guy, well, one suggestion. Just part it to the other side. It is what that's, that's, that's it. Perfect. Perfect. That's all. That's all. Let me tell you how this actually all came to be. Uh, um, I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's my hometown. I actually moved to LA uh, 16 years ago. And um, I, uh, I love New Mexico so much. I'm constantly you know, talking about New Mexico out there in LA. And I sort of, I actually saw a book programmer for AT&T while I was out there. And I, my mom was a hairstylist. So I grew up in a salon. And um, I, I loved it. My dad retired from San Diego National Labs and I wanted to go that way. But uh, it just basically told me to shut up all the time. They said, kid, just shut up, do your work. 
you know, because you're not, you're not here to talk. You're here to code. So I, so I basically said, screw it, I'm going to get into the hair business. So uh, uh, what, I, what I did is I sought out the, uh, what I thought to be the most successful hairstylist in Beverly Hills. And uh, his name is Giuseppe Franco. Uh, hung out over there, just basically doing whatever I could. Uh, he has a salon in Beverly Hills, 40 years there uh, in Beverly Hills. His clients, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, Mickey Rourke, kind of like, I think I knew this guy had some pool. Yeah, so um, I would, uh, while I was doing that, I was going to film school because uh, I wanted to do something creative. And um, I was filming Giuseppe, and we ended up putting like 10 TVs in the salon with, uh, with videos of him and Arnold and Sly and all these guys. And uh, eventually, after about five years of doing that, it got to the point where Giuseppe would be like, Leo, Arnold's upstairs. Go talk to him. I'm, I'm, cutting, I'm cutting, you know, I have a client right now. Go talk to Arnold. And I'm all like, oh, wow, sure. Go, go talk to him. So I'd go hang out with Arnold for about an hour before, you know, Giuseppe got up there and we talked about stuff. And uh, eventually I'm cooking at his house. Uh, I cooked for Arnold and, and uh, got to, whenever he came out here for the last stand, I, uh, I uh, um, got to show him the tram and you know, take him to house and, and uh, Giuseppe basically said, hey, Leo, you need to do something in the hair business for me. You know, you're hanging out here. So, so we're, uh, we, we started manufacturing hair products. And then just like not even a week ago, we came up with an idea to engage all of our, our, uh, our stylists that we have on our network, which is about, about 500,000 hairstylists in our network that we share videos with. Um, and products, we ship products to them, and we wanted to engage them in a, in a, in a tool for them. And this, we came up with OpenChair. Basically, it's similar to Uber or OpenTable or uh, something like that. Um, everybody that needs a haircut spontaneously, uh, they're, they're thinking about a haircut, they can press a button on their app, and they can see who's available right there and then. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, so it's an in-between, kind of like like Uber, it's between the stylist and the customer that's looking for a service. And um, uh, we are currently still developing it. We're putting it all together. Um, we are excited because we have a, a, an awesome reach of stylists because Giuseppe, he's our spokesperson. We're going to be shooting videos um, and, uh, with him and, and everything like that as well. So so I'm, I'm extremely excited. I've only been back in Albuquerque for about 15 days um, I moved back for good, and I was going through Newscasting. Thank you, Newscasting, for posting everything uh, about this event because otherwise I would have never known about it. And um, and then now, standing in front of all of you, thank you, Bowtie, for allowing me to put that and launch it out here in my hometown. I'm excited about bringing uh, some resources that I have in LA to here, uh, including hopefully one day I keep on telling Arm to come and help me do something out here. You will, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. So that's all I get from him. So <laughs> one day if something, I, I get a chance, I'm definitely, you know, I'm, I'm hoping, because it takes, it really, I think I have some amazing resources and I'm hoping that, you know, with the help of Bowtie and everybody, I can put things together that make sense and uh, we can really create something huge. And, and I think one of the things that uh, I heard from Bowtie was that they're excited to have something big come out of New Mexico um, again, you know, over and over. And look at this room, it's packed. It's packed. And it's, I'm like excited about being in a room where everybody has these amazing I ideas. So thank you so much. That is Open Chair. Thank you very much. You wouldn't be working the second gone competitor. Um, we've got a lot of those, though, so they go all the way through. Um, speaking of someone who literally got an emergency haircut today, though, this morning, this is important. So, I can hide it under a hat, or we can, we're down to the final three. <clears throat> Epimedia with the backstory, please present yourselves. Yeah. 
Is that the fiddle with my phone? Can you hear me if I don't do this? Thanks, guys. If everybody can hear me, I'd not feel like you want to feel like it's for the recording, you want to <clears throat> There are a lot of parking lots in the world, and somebody is out there painting all of them. I'll tell you a story about a parking lot painter. They had a new family with a little baby, and as things go, they soon had more babies. <laughs> they did pretty well, though. He got a house, and he was ambitious, and he started a business. And this is a true story. And he got into real estate, and this guy who started painting parking lots got very successful through real estate. And there's more to the story. That baby grew up, and that baby is my friend Jeremy. Jeremy told me recently that he was going to start writing in a journal because he is pretty ambitious. He's an entrepreneurially minded guy, and he wishes that he knew what was going on in his dad's mind when he was at this early stage. He knows the story behind it. He knows the story, the detail. I started this company. We did this. But what he doesn't have is the backstory of what his dad was thinking, what his dad was trying to do, what he was nervous about, what he was the risk that he was taking. So we're familiar with, uh, with uh, uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest. I use all of these and have multiple accounts on these. And one of the things that's amazing to me as we keep getting more of them is we've found that people are happy to keep using new different ways to comp compartmentalize the people that they're talking to. So I want to introduce you to a new network, but a non-social network. So it's a network of you. So backstory is addressing the need of writing in a journal and getting the idea of what's really happening, the backstory, uh, and using the way that we communicate with social media to get those. Uh, let me switch over to my phone so I can show you where. Oh, I was going to show the. Uh, Okay, so this application really relies a lot on notifications. So this is something that's not going to, that uh, you don't spend a lot of time in the app. You get notifications that will ask you questions about what's going on in the moment. So normally you get these notifications kind of randomly about every four hours, so like three times a day. You will not get a notification before 9 a.m. You will not get a notification after 9 p.m. because I don't want this thing buzzing or waking you up all the time. But right now, just for the demo, when I when I open up the application in about 15 seconds, it will uh, pop up a notification so you can see it. So this phone's just in my pocket, or I'm doing other stuff, and the notifications that will come up. There's a lot of different questions that I'll ask. Things that just kind of ask you about your day. Uh, what kinds of things are you nervous about? What kinds of things are you looking for? Oh, hang on, I got a notification. So I pull that up right now. I got a notification that says, "What's been keeping you busy?" So I click on that, it opens up the app, and you can see the interface is super slim. There's not a lot here. This is not something you're supposed to be spending a lot of time in, but just really quickly, you click on it, you type some stuff. Um, my hands are shaking not because I'm nervous, but because I haven't slept in about two weeks. <laughs> so I'm not going to try and actually spell anything. But then I click send, and it's not by accident this looks a lot like a uh, texting interface or a chatting interface. It's supposed to feel like a social network. It's just a social network where I'm the only person. So it's timestamped, and you can see, I can scroll, scroll back up and see the other things that have been written. Something that's coming soon, you see these colored buttons down at the bottom? It's not working yet, but you can click on those, and the different colors will toggle to different conversations. So I can have one that's just for whatever weird thing I'm thinking about. Maybe the green one is for family stuff, the red one is for things I'm dealing with with work, and the purple one is like, religious church things that I want to keep track of and keep them separate. Now, as of today, you can export all of these really easily. 
We're not trying to keep your data on our server. It's all backed up there. It's all reliable. But you can have this, and you can just copy it into an email and send it to yourself. You can copy it into another document. that could use this, I already talked about an entrepreneur that wants to just have this story to pass on. Parents are an easy target because kids grow up so fast, things change so fast. You want to report the day-to-day -day things of the funny things your kids say, the way they act with each other, the kinds of phases that they grow through, go, through, go through because those things change and they get forgotten. Uh, people that are, keeping, that are into uh, family history, Family history is changing entirely. It's no longer about dates and facts. Now that there's things you're putting in about yourselves, the people that are in that mindset of mother. As we go, I already said that those communicate, those conversations are going to get implemented. We're going to hire a designer to make this look slick and feel good in your hand, as well as uh, working with pictures, because those are just going to be part of the way that we communicate. Thank you very much. Look it up and register for the beta. down to the last 300 entries, so this should be really quick. I can't count, it's actually two. Uh, ooh, we have Goat Dog with Goat, Goat Dog Fantastica. Oh. Well, before we do that, I'd like to invite Gary Ovidal up. Gary's with the, the city, has been a great supporter of entrepreneurs in the startup environment, and we are delighted to have him here and say a few words on those things. First of all, I want to say, isn't bow tie excellent? I mean, uh, what, free drinks, getting everybody together, and this has been one long testimonial for how easy this platform is to use, and we really appreciate their support here, too. You know, I. I those who went on, by the way, totally appreciate that. I would have done that. And, uh, you know, if you're not having fun here tonight, you, know, you need to check your pulse. I want, to find, I want to tell you a couple of things that I found out tonight. First of all, Bowtie created a web page that allowed Blackfish to create a web page to help you create a web page. <laughs> uh, backstory is going to allow me to journal the 137 plates I'm spinning to remind me spinning 137 plates. Uh, SAS Chatter allows me to make comments where nobody knows who I am. I, I secretly like to wear suits. <laughs> and all hackers are extremely underdressed. Um, I can find my perfect match. Not sure I want to meet them. Uh, I've ordered a ferret onto you. Don't know why that hasn't shown up yet. Um, I found out what I need to watch this long weekend and flashed back to my 70s mood ring uh, to figure out what I want to watch later tonight. So uh, this has been uh, a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. You know, when good people get together, good things happen. And, you know, it's not about what Bowtie does or what I do or what you do. It's what we all do together. It's been a great event. And I really appreciate Bowtie once again. So we're going to let uh, the judges adjourn. We're going to let you guys vote on the audience choice award. And while the judges are deliberating, we have a wonderful bar. We have wonderful tea from Delicious Sip. We have all kinds of great stuff and beer. Please grab yourself a drink before we come back and see who wins. Hello, everyone. The judges.
judges have emerged from their green room tomb with very important information. So find some seats, get comfortable for the big reveals. That's how you turn this mic off. By the way, I have found the hard switch. <laughs> <laughs> and turning this microphone off. Plug it, plug it back in. It's not Windows. Watch, <laughs> watch. <laughs> 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 Okay, guys. Oh, it's in my mouth. Got it. Okay. Springboard 2015. About to announce the winners. Um, first, I'm going to go through the prize list and let you guys know what you will be winning. Hopefully, ramp up the anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. So, we got the runner up prize. Okay. And that's the winner's yet. Wait. <laughs> got four months free ramp. This is for the runner up. For a 500 square foot office at Blanca Square. Startup legal setup from Learner Venture Law. Two hours of guidance from a creative startup's mentor of your choice. Three months of luxury tea for delicious sip. Six months of free hosting on OFAC. Premium supports included in that, by the way, guys. Uh, and you're going to get both side team for the sweatshirts. So. It looks roughly like this, like that. <laughs> yeah, missing the bottom line, but the top one's the right. Okay, so this is the grand prize winner of this event. Wait, Who's start the with the runner up. Do the runner up first. Do the runner up and now. Yeah, yeah, do the runner up and then grand prize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> The runner-up for the 2015 Springboard competition is Backstory. Where's the? There. Oh yeah. Come on up. Come on up. <laughs> The, the coveted silver bow tie. <laughs> this is so much better on video. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just probably want to say a few words. To give, give some feedback. I do actually want to say. That. Yeah, and, and the judges. The guys who were the only ones here that aren't web developers. You guys, it took you four hours to get Git working. I was working on getting Git working until 1 a.m. Tuesday night, and you're all excited. Your app didn't work until 6:30 last night. 4:30 a.m. Thanks a lot for the two hours. I'm really excited about what we're going to do with this app and plugging it into the. And then illustrious oh, judges, sure did, you, did you want to give them some feedback? Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear what you had to say about backstory. Since backstory, we were, we were uh, I think it has a lot of potential. It's unique. You know, we live our lives these days, and we're creating a lot of additional information about what we're doing. What happens when we got? Where does that information go? So I like the idea of passing by. And I think that, you know we, we use prompts and as a device to get 
thinking about something you might not think about at a time when you might not be inclined to think about it is a very uh, good and, and useful tool. And I think people would love it. And people would think that's really gets me out of my rut and makes me more conscious about what I'm doing. So it's got a key, I think it's got a lot of potential. And uh, there may be some design opportunities. <laughs> 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 I know that's a shot. It was a foot down. That was a good time. Give that to give back to Botan. I thought it was really high high uh, utility and great creativity. You can't underestimate the value of giving people the one So if you've got something scheduled and you win this, you probably should cancel that. <laughs> um, legal setup and trademark services for your startup for learner after loss. Three hours of guidance from Creative Startups Mentor of your choice. Six months free at Albuquerque's best co-working space, at Pi Baby Cube. Right? Yeah. A three-month coffee subscription from Zendo. Yeah. Woo. Four months of luxury tea for delicious sip. And here's the kicker. One year of hosting for your project on Bowtie with premium support. <laughs> and also Bowtie team hooded sweatshirts. Yeah. So, the The winner of 2015 Spring Board Competition is Sass Chatter. Woo! Woo! You don't need it with that one. It's perfect. You look great. So, I guess judges comments. Okay. Well, what did I find? Change is part of your team. We didn't know that until just now. We came up with the we came up the original SAS Center idea at my first startup weekend event on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> we were driving back to Las Cruces, and we started in the car. We were talking about, you know, we really wanted a place to have feedback about events, but in real time. And it's sort of been in the works the whole time. I didn't design any of it, but ideas, marketing, <laughs> buzzwords. <laughs> it's a special kind of crazy, um, but sometimes that's exactly what everybody needs. Um, and uh, we can see it at South by Southwest, um, abrupting a whole room. <laughs> I was the guy that typed these. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to demonstrate that that was part of what you're doing. What is getting into? That's the 
That's exactly why we don't have picture functionality. Utilize the scripts and catch all the I've got all covered. It was really tough. I mean, everything in general, it was it was a really tough decision. That was the way. You have to make decisions. <laughs> but it was great. We're really counting on you to carry the state flag. This is a big deal, being down uh, south by southwest, you know, representing New Mexico. This is not about you. <laughs> this is about Keep that ego in check. <laughs> so when you sass Jack, and that becomes a verb, we want it trademarked to New Mexico. <laughs> I would just like to uh, thank the bow time team because um, I guess everyone's mentioning what time they got stuff working. I didn't get stuff working until what 8:30 last night when James was helping me debug stuff. So uh, thanks, guys. Awesome fun, guys. Work. Congratulations! Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, do you guys want to come up here and so you can use a mic and, and be as powerful a speaker as I am? Yeah, we don't do that. Not if we have to be as powerful as you. trying hard to imagine all kinds of different ways of evaluating what we saw. What would be most likely to be a successful business versus what demonstrated the greatest amount of out-of-the-box creativity versus who used the platform to its greatest extent. Just a lot of different ways of looking at the, the work that was done. And uh, I think the, the judges uh, probably were not so much judges as appreciators and uh, real fans of what we got to see tonight. And the spirit with which everybody came to this event uh, and with which it was hosted are exemplary and, and really uh, stand out as a flagship night. So everybody should go home uh, thinking, how soon can we do this again? This is great. Congratulations to everybody who stood up and presented. There was enormous potential, creativity, 
shippability, uh, challenges of fuzzy, warm and fuzzies versus weird and crazy versus who gets to die first. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you don't get this every Friday night everywhere in the United States. So big standing ovation to everybody for, for being here tonight. It's spectacular. Congratulations. going to be getting what I wish I would have gotten. Uh, the Oculus Rift Dev Kit 2. <laughs> hey, whoa, 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 we have a very important we, we thing forgot. that may happen. Are we, we missing the Oculus Rift? No, no, yeah, no, 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 we've got it. We're the hour meeting right now. We're going to bring it up. It's a virtual version. Because I know this is the next time we're going to be really good. Yeah, you better claim this guy. Second prize. Six months free hosting on Bowtie. Also awesome. <laughs> Does that come with premium supporters? Yeah. Um, yes. Yes, it does. Uh, yeah. It doesn't look like it. yeah, yeah. No, that was totally. <laughs> it. You, you can like. Well, cool. you can change the cell phone number. It's fine. <laughs> and uh, one month supply of luxury tea from Delicious Sip. Woo! Yeah. And a Bowtie IO team hooded sweatshirt. So one thing about the audience choice awards, winners can, like the winners of the first and second prize can also win the audience choice. The two are completely separate. Um, so I'm not too sure who's won. We've got this awesome envelope that's been sealed really well by Dave. So I'm going to try to open it here without looking too much at pool and let you guys know who won. One second. Thank you. Drum roll. So, the 2015 Springboard Audience Choice Award goes to Mood to Watch. Wait, did he, did he get the audience choice bow tie? The, the, the audience choice bow tie. Who wants a bow tie? The best bow tie ever. Um, I, I just want to say, you know, we're part of this community and, and we're we're having an absolute blast. You know, newscasting is what we do during the day and to be able to do things like this on the side and be able to show it to all you guys, it really is just, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be <coughs> part of the scene. Um, and we really look forward to, you know, doing as much as we can to support you guys and to, to talk entrepreneurship and, you know, we're actually going to sell guys, so we'll do all we can to spread the word. So, thanks everyone. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Who doesn't watch movies? <laughs> 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 kind of likened this to the emotional genome project for mm -hmm. movies. Mm -hmm. uh, just a way of a game changer for how you spend, you know, how you sit on your, the, the intro is perfect. You're sitting there, what am I going to do tonight? And how do I make a decision? It, 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 it's a very fun, creative, and useful at the same time uh, methodology. And, and you know, we all give it high marks. You know, I'm, I, we feel really good about the award going that way. And the both eyes fit. So. <laughs> <laughs> there is the, the, the just part, you know, justice arc story has a long arc, but it ultimately ends up around the edge. <laughs> 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 so, I think before they uh, before they take the mic away from the close up, I just want to say that it works with pretty much all of you one-on-one, um, -on -one, and it's been an amazing opportunity. Uh, I really appreciate what you guys have done with the platform, how far you've taken it. Um, it's been amazing to see how much you guys have accomplished in such little time. Uh, this isn't like two weeks that you spent just working on this project. This is two weeks with full-time jobs, families, etc. and what you guys have shipped today is just really amazing. Uh, I look forward to continuing to work with you guys in the future. It's been, it's been a blast. <laughs> All right, I'm not even going to take a full more minute and wrap this up for you. We have tremendous sponsors. The teams were incredible. Judges, thank you again. I don't think we can say that enough for taking the time to hear such wonderful and inspirational ideas. There's one group, though, that didn't take a curtain call that absolutely deserves it. And it's the only time I'm going to dwell on that tonight, and that's Team Bowtie. Absolutely. You guys spent so much time. Exactly what you did, and this was every bit as inspirational for us as we had hoped. Thank you for being a part of our dream and our vision, and you guys made that come true. So it's time for the bar. Thank you all so much. Move to watch. Come see me. I've got something for you.